So let me tell you about Susan as we're waiting for her to join. Um, like I mentioned before, she is a incredibly talented hair and makeup artist. And, um, oh, I just saw you. You're here. Yay. Okay, so Susan just, I don't know how to request to go live or try to make the split screen. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Yay. Okay, girl. It's coming to you. It's coming to you. <laughs> just waiting for your approval. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hi! Hey Susan, how are you? How's it going? Good. It didn't notify me that you were live. I'm, I kept, like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I knew there was going to be glitches. I knew nothing runs smoothly with my life. So I'm just happy you're here. Awesome. Okay, so, so let's just dive in right away. I just want to get to the juicy questions and I want to uh, just start the conversation. So, uh, so one question I have for you is uh, how soon should brides be booking their destination services for hair and makeup? How soon should they be reaching out to you? So the answer is always ASAP. <laughs> you know that hair and makeup gets booked about anywhere from like three months to like two years in advance. But especially for destination weddings, we do need advance notice so that we can make our arrangements, make our flights, accommodations, and then we right away start to make our like preparations. So that way we have a lot of like extra precautions that we take to ensure that the wedding day runs smoothly. We do that with all our weddings, but especially destination weddings are just more pieces of the puzzle that that go into that. Right. So, oh my goodness. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And that's always my response with photographers, too, in all of your very favorite wedding vendors. As soon as you have your date, lock us in. All right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I love it. Perfect. Okay, so that's good. So that's right away. Find a vendor team. Uh, find a hair makeup stylist that you love and lock them in. Uh, okay, so let's just roll into the next question. I'm so excited. Um, what makes... Or sorry, what mistakes do brides make while planning destination weddings? So can you give us some insight to some preventable like disasters that can happen? Yeah, so the first one I want to share, I have two. The first one is not really a mistake, but it can be a mistake if you're not educated on the different options. And this is like a big thing when it comes to destination weddings is if you're going to have your certificate, um, if you're going to be legally married in another country or if you're going to go through your state and your location first. So um, the advantages of getting married and having everything legit and legal in another country, let's say you're getting married in Mexico, you can have your actual wedding date on your marriage certificate the day that you say your vows on the beach in Mexico. But to do that, there's, and it depends on the country and the state, and there's all kinds of different laws and all that stuff that goes into it, of course. But usually they'll ask, like, you to do blood work, a bunch of paperwork, and the paperwork has to be translated in their language. So you have to get it, like, certified translator to do all this. So it's a lot, uh, there's more of a cost that goes into all of that if you want to do it legally there. And it can be um, time consuming because you have to do the blood work. And if you've been married previously, so if you're divorced and maybe this is your second marriage, there's even more paperwork and time um, laws. Like Mexico, for example, they want to wait a certain time period before you can get married again. So there's a lot more logistics that go into it. But if you want to avoid all of those logistics, you can totally go to your local city hall, do a legal little ceremony there, and then say your vows and have more of a symbolic marriage on the beach in Mexico or wherever you're getting married at, um, whatever your destination location is. So that's just one thing I wanted to chat about because it's a huge thing that come, when it comes to destination weddings, and it's not really a mistake, it's just a preference, but it can be a mistake if you don't know Absolutely. things like that, right? <laughs> yeah. See, okay, you're just mind-blowing me already, and this is why, guys, I handpicked these incredible vendors, because honestly, I thought we were just talking about hair and makeup today, and here comes Susan dropping straight knowledge on preventative, like, disasters and things that you don't really think about, and so thank you for sharing that. I think that's important for a lot of couples to know, and, and to help plan, help prep, because that's what this whole entire week is about, is creating streamlines, 
stress-free days and not creating like extra drama when we don't need it, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm involved in a lot of destination wedding planning groups. Um, if you're a destination bride and you're watching, I highly suggest to join some groups on Facebook. They're super helpful. And they can connect you to a lot of uh, past brides and learn from a lot of experiences there. So I wanted to definitely share that one because that's one that comes up so often in the groups. And um, so so that's one. But the second does relate to bridal hair and makeup um, and, and also photographers and other vendors. So if you are going to fly in a vendor to come to your wedding, usually it's photographers or a hair and makeup artist. You just want to make sure that they know how to travel with their equipment, travel with their gear, so that they um, can provide their services easily and minimize like any errors or mistakes or you know disasters. So I know Kiana is so experienced. You can totally fly her anywhere, and she knows exactly what to do. We travel together, so I know that. But yes. uh, I'm gonna share a quick story, real quick. When we went to DR, we went to Dominican Republic to do a destination wedding. Um, an artist, one of my artists on my team and I traveled there and we like meticulously packed our bridal hair and makeup kits to meet all the requirements. Um, we carry it on with us so that it never leaves our site because can you imagine like, no, if I would die. It's broken or your hair and makeup kits get lost or damaged and you're in another country. They might not have the same equipment. They might not have the same products or tools, and you might not even know where to get them, right? Like, right. Where is the nearest Sephora? Do they even have a Sephora? Right, or a Target. They might not even have these in these tiny little islands. You don't know. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a remote location. It just depends. So um, hiring an experienced professional who knows how to travel with their stuff. So we went to DR. We packed everything uh, perfectly and we're like, you know, making sure we took all our precautions and kind of just being a little over dramatic because what are the chances that this is going to happen, but we want to take our, our precautions. When we got to the airport, we overheard a flight attendant talking to each other and they were talking about how last week they lost like a hundred bags of carry on of luggage checked in luggage. And so that we just looked at each other and we're like, that's exactly why. <laughs> We meticulously packed everything and made sure that we could take it onto the plane with us and it never leaves our site. Absolutely. So that's, that's mistake number two to answer your question. <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. These are so helpful. And I think that's important too because even just kind of crossing worlds as a wedding photographer, I take every precaution possible. I mean, I literally, when I pack my bags for destination weddings, inside my carry-on, I literally only have one outfit and one pair of shoes that I plan on wearing to the actual wedding day, plus all my gear. So that is in my hand, in my lap, the entire time. So I just, I, I respect that, that you go above and beyond to make sure you have all of the products with you, like in hand's reach. That is so important. I know. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, whatever is getting checked in is, like, close. <laughs> yeah. Something that I could buy, have, like... <laughs> It doesn't matter. Like, I have to get. I have to go buy a whole new wardrobe. I can. Like, I cannot replace my gear. And never having it out of your sight is so important. Yeah. Yes. Definitely. Oh my goodness. Okay. So obviously, as we are promoting each other and trying to showcase our services, I of course always want my couples to book people I love and trust. My question for you, my next question is, what if, for whatever reason, maybe you're booked, maybe some other vendors that I love and trust are booked, they're not available, or sometimes um, wedding locations and resorts only allow you to bring like a referral, but, like a, a preferred vendor. So if, um, if a couple is planning a destination wedding, what are some tips that you can share about finding uh, people from another country to, to do the hair and makeup team. Like, like I say, I always want to promote just flying us out there. But if that's not up, up an option, what do you suggest? Yeah, so a lot of times um, the hotel will have their preferred vendors, like you said, or they have a little salon or spa or something in the hotel that they will recommend the brides to book the salon professionals there directly. So. If that happens or if you find yourself in that kind of situation, I would just obviously do your research, 
look at some reviews and make sure that there's like what are past brides saying and then look at their portfolio and make sure that you see some hairstyle and makeup looks that will fit with your wedding day or are along the lines of what you wanted or envisioned for your wedding day and then the next thing I would do is also see if there's if the communication is flowing well and make sure that there's not going to be like a language barrier there or if they have any option for like a translator or something like that and if at all possible if you can ask if they have like an option to meet via zoom or skype or like a video chat i because i know my destination brides i know the dusty brides they feel it's uneasy when you're planning an entire wedding from another country, right? And so half your vendors, you don't get to meet them ahead of time. Um, it can be pretty expensive to fly back and forth planning your wedding. So a lot of times my Dusty Brides, they might have made one trip to secure their venue at the most, you know? And if that, if they got that, otherwise they're securing their venue even just online from photos. So, um, so what I find to be helpful for Dusty Brides is if they can meet their vendors on like a Zoom chat or a Skype or something, video face-to-face, -face, and kind of just maybe ask them if they're available for a video chat for a consultation. And that way you can like see how, how well you can communicate, are you understanding when you're trying to translate like the updo or the hairstyle that you want or the makeup look that you want. Is the artist understanding what you're saying? You know, is there options available for you? And that will give you like a really good feel of what's what's to expect on a wedding day. I think that's brilliant. That was a really great tip. And especially to even just for the stylist to have that communication. Um, I know of so many brides that have really great visions for what they want their hair to look like, but sometimes their hair texture just, it, it isn't gonna work, right? So it's nice to have that, that um, just like that pre-conversation to make sure all on the same page. And uh, and like we talk about too often too, it's like this is the vibe, like this girl potentially, or guy, you might do makeup, um, is doing, you know, this is gonna be the start of your day. And so you wanna make sure you can speak the same language or at least communicate well enough to get what you need. Yeah, that's awesome. If, the, if there is a language barrier there, you want to just bring photos. Um, don't have the photos, like, don't bring three photos that are totally different from each other. Make sure you decide on a look. <laughs> because yeah. you're able to really communicate the difference between the three. Like, oh, I liked how her eyeshadow looks on this one, but I like her lips in this one, and I like her hair. In this one. So make sure that you find, like, one photo that the is whole thing that you want. Yeah. Love it. The whole look. I love it. I love that. Oh my gosh, these are awesome tips. Um, okay, so we have another question from another um, viewer who asked for a year. Um, what, oh, I love this question. What hair and makeup trends, in your experience, will stand the test of time? So something that's not too trendy, but still, it's good, like a classic. What are some classic options that you love? Yeah, okay, so for makeup, Right now, I'm really loving that no eyeliner look. So you're, you still have some eyeliner, but it's more soft and smudgy and smoky, and it kind of just blends with the eyeshadow, but you can still kind of elongate the eyes or you know add like an accent, but it's not super defined and precise like we've been seeing like the winged eyeliner or the precision eyeliner or the gel eyeliner, liquid eyeliner. So um, I really like that trend because I feel like the winged eyeliner, we can kind of time stamp that. Like we know what years the winged eyeliner is trending. And so I, I really like that right now, I would say more than ever. And I don't know because we're in the present right now. You know? Yeah, I know, it's hard. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell, but I feel like right now more than ever, as the way that makeup is going is going more towards that natural and timeless glam. Like even glam is being more natural I and time that. soft. Yeah. I love yeah. That. Hair, um, for hair, I would say like updos and down and half up styles are always gonna be pretty timeless and classic. 
They're just different variations. But there are definitely some hairstyles that I actually am a fan of, but they're more trendy and they might, you know, you'll be able to tell, like, okay, at that time, those hairstyles were really um, trendy, like the, what do I call it? It's the Greek goddess hairstyle is what I call it. And it's like um, lots of volume and it's pinned together and it all goes to the back. I love that hairstyle, but I know that that is totally like a trend hairstyle yeah it's like a time stamp the hollywood glam waves um are kind of like a vintage classic because it's like vintage coming back again so it's like a modern spin on that but um i know that that's a big trend right now as well yeah Yeah. so so if you do like like the hollywood glam waves let's say you're really loving that but you want to make sure that it's timeless Maybe just make it a little not so defined and make like a, a smoother version of it where it's a little looser so it could be a little more timeless. So there's ways to like take things or looks that you like and kind of make it a little more timeless. I love that. And especially with, especially coming from my photography background, I'm always trying to encourage my brides to find a look that they love right now, but that they are going to love for generations to come. And so that's really helpful. Yeah. Oh my gosh, so exciting. (laughs) Perfect. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, Okay, so next question, we'll just keep on rolling through. Um, How do you... what is your strategy for, for, for preparing for large wedding parties? And that could be something as, you know, small, average size, maybe five to six bridesmaids, plus mothers and mother-in-laws, a couple of curls for flower girls. What is your kind of game plan for large wedding parties for glam? Yeah, so my biggest strategy for large parties is to hire a makeup and hair team somebody, a company who has multiple artists available to bring, uh, to provide all the services in a timely manner so you're not like getting ready at the crack of dawn and like one artist is working on 20 people for 12 hours straight, you know? That's That's crazy. Ridiculous. So I'll hire somebody who has access to multiple vendors. The huge advantage of hiring a company who has a team is that you're communicating with just one person who's organizing it all, and they will bring the artists. And these artists are vetted. You know, they're representing their, that company, so they made sure to do their due diligence and gather a team of professionals that they know and trust and are talented. And then you just communicate with just one person. So it makes things so much easier. And then our glam squad comes on the day of with like five artists to take care of everyone and that provides a more relaxing experience not only for the clients but also for us because we're not stressing out like we're trying to ask too many services into one time slot so that's one is having enough artists to help um and then the other uh suggestion i would say is to find a place so either a large hotel suite that has lots of room for everybody and that's going to help the bride and everybody else to feel more calm because there's more elbow room. (laughs) Yeah. Um, when the little ones come, there's room for them to run around and, and whatever. Um, so either a large hotel suite or even a cute Airbnb. I love Airbnbs because some of my brides have booked the best Airbnbs that are so like photographic, lots of natural light, or they have a view up on a hilltop or something like that. And you can like totally take advantage of photos there as well. And Airbnbs, you'll have like the whole house to yourself. So there's plenty of room. Another, I would say for that is, and this depends on the bride's personality, but some brides, when there's like a lot of people in the room, especially towards the end when everybody's arrived, it can get a little uh, antsy or you can feel like a little overwhelmed because there's so many voices or the volume gets turned up, you know? So if you are listening to this and you feel like that is you, then I would suggest to have either a hotel suite that has like two rooms combined and there's like a door or something, a doorway that kind of separates you so then the bride can be in her own little space or in the Airbnb if you can find a little corner or a just think 
just in case um, you're starting to feel anxious, then you can kind of like sneak away and have your own little space. Or if you know that you're already going to be that type of brain, then you can set it up that way already. I yeah. think that's I think that's brilliant. And I'm oh sorry. Go ahead. Let's say is have the little ones come towards the end too, because I know that they get antsy. They have so much energy, you know, and and they don't want to be like there for five six hours. They get bored. So <laughs> just have yeah. them come when it's their lab time. That's brilliant. And I love how you're addressing that. You're already, as an expert, giving these brides an opportunity to think, hey, this is my personality. This is what I need on my day. And girls, there's nothing wrong with like literally having your demands. <laughs> like, like set up your day for success knowing what based on what you need, but based on what's going to make you feel happy and relaxed and less stressed. Um just making these tiny little adjustments is going to set up your day for success and not feel like you're already overwhelmed before the day just started. Yeah. And there's like different personalities, right? Like I deal, my brides have all different personalities. So I have brides who they want a bunch of people around them. They want to have dance parties or just like high energy, high vibes. And they're totally like chill. Like they don't, they're not getting any, you know, nervousness or like, they're not getting bothered by anything. And then I have the opposite where brides are getting, like, once the volume gets turned up, they're like, okay, like, I'm in the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you got to just kind of think to yourself, put yourself in that situation before it happens and figure out what you feel like you would want. I think that's yeah. awesome. Oh, my gosh. These are incredible tips. Thank you. So good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um. Let's see here. And I'm just reading all the email stuff. Of this. People have come through. Yeah. Thanks so much for asking me all these questions and inviting me. Yeah, no, of course. These are so good. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's see here. And then oh, do you, I love talking about this uh, because typically, and this is like, I love to just like get this out in the open. Um, a lot of times like hair and makeup artists sometimes get a bad rap simply for taking too long for getting ready. Right. But yeah. I know as an expert and I know being in the actual getting ready space that it's not your fault. <laughs> like like there, there are things that happen. So can you share with your experience some things that um, happen on wedding mornings that kind of get, get brides and bridesmaids pulled away from their chair that um, just kind of are little time suckers. Do you have any suggestions or like any um, preventative things for that? Yeah, there's so many things that can happen with the timeline. So one thing that I suggest to my brides all the time, when they are telling me, I always ask them, what time do you need to be done by? And this is on my little questionnaire form. So what time do they need to be done by? And what time is your photographer arriving? Because if those times, so ideally, usually, this is how it goes, we should be finishing just as the photographer is arriving or we just finished and then the photographer arrives. So if the bride tells me to be, she wants us to be done by 11 a.m. and the photographer is scheduled to arrive at 9 a.m. That's two hours difference there. And I'm like, okay, there's something off here. So I always recommend for brides to communicate with their photographers and say, hey, what time do you need us ready for getting ready photos? And then we can always pose. So if you're completely beautiful and ready to go, then your photographer arrives. We can pose with some makeup brushes. And you can take some snapshots of getting ready photos. Because <laughs> nobody's going to want the half done with, like, contour and highlight. I know. Like, yeah, and you look, you look like you're on, like, a scene from Cats with, like, your contour and makeup all crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, no. No. Nobody's going to want that in their photo album. Like, they're not going to choose that, you know? No. So just wait until you're done and we'll, we'll post with our brushes and stuff. Um, so that's is just like having communication with your photographer about what time they need you to be ready by so that they can get their photos and then we'll and then a lot of times I'll reach out to the photographers as well say hey we have this bread in common this is the timeline let me know if you have any questions um, so having that communication is one I also schedule a lot of cushion time because there has been situations where emergencies or unforeseen circumstances come up on either the bridal party's end, the wedding venue's end. We one time showed up to a wedding venue 
and the person who was supposed to open the venue was at home asleep. She didn't get back. She didn't get to the venue to open it for us for an hour. So, oh my god! Two of my artists were all outside, and the bride and her bridesmaids, all of like six, seven of us, are outside in the parking lot waiting an hour for this person to open the venue for us. So we lost the whole hour of getting ready time, but because we had cushion time, sorry, because we had cushion time. Uh, we were able to finish everyone on time, so that, that we lost an hour, and it and it totally it was okay. not um, yeah pushed us back. So it was it turned out to be so good. So I always tell my brides, this is how much time we're dedicating, and this includes cushion time in case of emergencies or anything unforeseen circumstances, whatever. And the other thing is that we don't want to stop you from celebrating your day if you want to pause and do a champagne toast we don't want to be like jerks like well we're on a tight timeline and we don't have time for that you know so we want you to enjoy your time we want everyone to feel relaxed and we want everyone to feel like they got high quality professional services they didn't get like half done you know they weren't being rushed they had an opportunity to voice their opinions or their thoughts or anything like that if they want adjustments we also have like um touch up time towards the end so i think it's being proactive before the wedding day ever happens and just making sure that you have taken those precautions and then on the wedding day um some things that i don't think about are like um, switching locations. That never works. <laughs> I have brides who once in a while, they'll try to say like, oh, let's get half the people ready at the hotel. And then we're gonna pack everything up and travel down the road to the wedding venue and finish the rest of the services there. Okay. And then it's gonna work. <laughs> like, because they, they say like, oh, but it's only 10 minutes from here to here. You're not including rounding up seven people seven women they all have to grab their starbucks their shoes or stuff and then the hair and makeup artists have to pack up our kids um drive down the road hopefully nothing happens in that 10 minutes drive and then you have to get there unpack then you have to wait for seven people to drive there <laughs> yeah it just never works out as planned and so in their schedule they'll plan like 10 minutes when really it takes like an hour and a half for that whole transition. <laughs> that um, is so true. Like I'm literally I'm laying this out in my head and just like just see this laughter happening I'm holding right now. Right? <laughs> yeah, I think because we've been in the industry so long, like we have seen all these things, right? So we're just like imagining this disaster. Yeah. Um, thing. Um, so I think it's just being proactive like I said, if your vendors or if your hair and makeup team is scheduling cushion time, you'll be able to do those quick champagne toasts and stuff like that. Um, just make sure that everybody is there and um, everybody knows when to come or everybody is already there ready for the hair and makeup services as well. I love that. Oh, my God. These are such great tips. Like, I'm literally, like, I can't wait to rewatch this and then write everything down for the blog. This is so helpful, Susan. Seriously, thank you. Thank you. I'm oh, my gosh. Glad. So, uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and wrap up. I have one question for you that I've been asking everyone so far. What is one moment on a wedding day that is your, and we can even speak specifically to the getting ready portion of the day. Uh, but in your experience, what is her favorite part? Like, what is your favorite moment? Whether it's with a couple, whether it's with a mother-daughter moment, or a maid of honor. What? What do you like? What kind of like gives you the chills or the tingles on the on a wedding morning? Oh my gosh! Okay, so one thing that I always um, think about, and this is so fun, when I get to see the mom or the dad, like them being in their nerves and usually it's the mom and she's like walking around just like adjusting things on the table and she's just like walking around like just doing random things and everything's looking at her because you could tell that she's just nervous or she's just anxious for the day and she's like totally not acting herself but I think it's so cute because you can tell how much the mom cares and how like how nervous she is and how excited she is. 
a lot of times my brides will be like, mom, like sit down, like calm down, you know, like they're getting annoyed, but inside of me, I'm just like loving it because I think it's so cute. And the same thing with the dads, you'll see the dads like start to like act really weird. And I'll ask the bride too, like, does he normally do this? And she'll be like, no, not at all. Like he's totally wigging out, <laughs> you know? And I just love it because I just show how much they, they care, you know, and how much, how excited they are. So I, I love to see the moms and the dads, their interactions. And then if the bride has like any special mom time or dad time where they do like, um, the dad comes into the room and he tears up seeing his daughter, you know, like special know. moments. <laughs> you make me cry. Mom and dads, they just always get me. Oh, I love seeing that though. So special, and I and I love that too. And I, I love that you are you are a mom yourself, and you understand these feelings and these emotions. And that yes, we I feel like we drill down on our brides all the time. Like this is your day. Like you make decisions. You do what you want, and, and you decide it's a couple. Yada yada. But at the end of the day, this really is such an incredible day for your entire family. And so yeah. for you to already pick up on those emotions and, and be there to witness that in the morning before the day even technically starts is, is really special. So that's awesome. Oh my gosh. So special. I love it. And being a mom too, because I see myself in the mom's situation, even though I'm so young. I'm not old enough to have a kid who's getting married, but I could see that, you know, I could relate to that already. I love it. So good, Steve. Oh my gosh. Okay, Susan. So how does everyone find you? Like, how can everyone go and stalk Gyra Artistry? Yeah, so my Instagram, I love my Instagram account because I post photos there constantly. So I feel like it's a good representation of who we are. We post reviews there and all that good stuff too. So Gyra Artistry is an Instagram, or you can go to our website. The link in our bio has like the website, a free phone call with us. If you want to book a phone consult with us or, um, or contact form, you know, the link in the bio pretty much has everything. <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your wisdom. Um, I mentioned before you hopped on how you're not only a great resource for destination and local Bay Area hair and makeup, but you also have this empire that you're building with helping other makeup artists and stylists um, just step up their game and just be professionals. And I think that's, I'm just so proud of you. And I'm just so excited. <laughs> Thank you, Kiana. Thank you. Oh my gosh. We'll be in touch soon. And um, thanks again for joining. And I cannot wait to see you soon. Thank Yay! You. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good day.